Hey Crafters, Big D here with the Lady Dragon, and this week we are finally building the Ultimate Kill Team Board. Hey Crafters, Big D here with the Lady Dragon, and this week we are doing the first half of our Ultimate Kill Team Board. We are building the frame and the landform for a jungle themed kill team board. Previously uh, you saw us unboxing the Death World Forest box which this will be the future home of. So the idea is we are building this jungle terrain. We've got some rolling hills, we've got a piece of land in the middle, and we've got some water features, a couple of rivers running through it, which we're going to, when we get to the detailing stage, fill with resin. So this part, all you're gonna need is some wood and the foam that to build everything with. We'll go over the details down below. Let's get to crafting. All right, crafters, so we're going to build something today. <laughs> we're going to build wood or out of wood. So what we've done, we've got some one by threes. Now these one by threes, we're not using the cheapest crappy wood, uh, but you don't have to go crazy and buy like super expensive hardwood either. This the reason is... why you don't want to use the furring strips is they are very splintery and they're not very well put together. So by using, if you wanted to go with those, you are giving yourself extra work because you will need to sand it down and smooth it out before you can even begin on the project. Now, with these, you need to give them a little bit of sanding to get them nice, there's not so, not so bad edges. The big thing is you gotta worry about is knot holes. And you're gonna wanna glue your knot holes. So one of the things you can do is you can actually pull the knot hole out, fill the hole with a little bit of glue and slide the knot back in. Um, you can also use super glue with a little bit of baking soda and you'll get that same effect that you do otherwise. You just gotta be real gentle with it. And again, do that and then sand your wood. Now, since we are building a kill team board, a kill team board is 30 inches by 22 inches. So, we want the inside diameter on these boards to be 20, 22 by 30. So we cut two long boards 30 inches long. Then we cut two boards 22 inches long plus the width of two more boards so that the inside will be 22 by 30. Now we're just going to take the wood you're going to want to drill your pilot holes first, and we're just going to do butt joints. So you're going to put the, yes, I said butt. We're going to put the wood, the, the short ends on the outside, and basically make a box. All right, so drill out your pilot holes, and put your screws together. We're going to make a box and be right back. Okay, so we have a nice nice flat square box, a little rectangle. So now we are gonna put on the bottom. So this is gonna be a sheet of quarter inch MDF. Really common stuff for people that are making uh, heavy terrain or heavy duty terrain. Um, I buy it in big sheets. It comes in 24 inch by 48 inch sheets here in the States at most home places. Um, we took it, 24 inches is just a tiny bit wider than our kill team board is. So that's perfect, I have a little bit of a lip, but then we just had to cut it to size for length. It's a little bit over 31 inches. So we're gonna put it on, and my lovely assistant's gonna mark the holes that we're going to drill. Because again, you want to drill your holes before you put screws in. Another note to add is when you are doing a project like this, you're probably going to want to, as you can see, the screws here on the side, you're going to want to get someone, if you can, to help you out with this. That way they can act as your eyes. 
Some of these we marked with a uh, the, uh, permit marker. Some of them we did not. He just eyeballed them. Uh, but because having a second person, there were some gaps that he did not catch until I said something. So if you can have a second set of eyes and a second set of hands, always great. So as he was saying, we're going to use this lovely piece of boarding as the base for this whole thing to be able to hold the kill team board in place, allowing it to have a really nice stability. That way it can be transported a lot more easily. Again, using a, I'm using a blue one, a uh, permanent marker, you're going to go from where the screws are, they're going this way. So you don't obviously want to drill in there. For those of you who don't, don't know this, you're going to go slightly inside, make a little X. And we're going to do this for all four corners and the middles. Now with our holes uh, all drilled and ready to go, we're going to be using um, one inch screws, as you can see here, to go in. That's like I said, they're gonna hold it in. Some of you may be asking how come we're not using nails? Well, that would be because the Gamecraft Dragon is very anti-nail. If he can avoid it, he's not going to use it. Nails do not hold things in place. They just hold them until they fall out. And the power tool portion of the project is complete. From this point forward, the closest thing to a power tool you're going to use is a hot glue gun. So, the next step with our kill team box, you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're going to run a bead all the way around in the bottom and up in each of the joints. Just push it tight against it. You wanna seal your box. This is because we're gonna be putting some resin in later and we don't wanna to have to worry about dams or leaks. If we just put the hot glue in now before we put everything else in place, everything will be sealed. We'll be back with the hot glue dried and back with some foam. Alrighty crafters, Lady Dragon here. As you can see, we have added our hot glue into the edges as Gamecraft Dragon did tell us to do. We've got it up the edges and right here along the side, completely sealing the box itself off so that, as he said, we will be using some resin because some water effects are going to go into play with all of this and we want to make sure that the resin doesn't get out. Very important because that stuff, I know from experience, is a pain in the fanny to try and clean up. So, that being said, here now you see some of the famous Gamecraft Dragon pink foam board. This is actually the larger of two pieces that we have that's going to sit inside the frame that we have. The reason it's a two pieces is because there's the idea as we are doing a, you know, Death World Forest thing going on, the idea that we're doing with this world is we're going to be combining the aesthetics of the Amazon rainforest with the colors of Pandora from James Cameron's Avatar, which means lots of blues, lots of greens, lots of dark, oh my God, it's going to eat me. So to start off, what I'm going to do here is you're gonna see me using this lovely permanent marker, and I'm going to draw roughly where I'm going to want part of the river to begin. I'm not gonna cut it out yet because there is actually a technique that the, uh, that Big D had once showed me with one of his other older things that I actually want to use that way I can get an uneven edge and um, movement of it so it actually looks like a water effect. Consequently, this does involve the use of acetone. Be very careful when we get to that point, you'll get all the warnings you need, but. So as you can see, what basically I'm going to pick an area. So let's say we're gonna let it pool right here. And then just kind of let your hand flow because no river anywhere, if it's natural, has a normal 
<laughs> fault line. <laughs> so, like I said, um, this is just kind of a basic, we're really not going to follow this, but this is just kind of giving me an idea of where I want this to flow from because we're going to be lapping two pieces together. So, you're of course going to make this your own when you do it, so don't worry too much about how you set it up. This is roughly thereabouts what I'm looking for, but final picture, once we get around to it and the two pieces are actually in the box, maybe a little bit different. Doesn't hurt to have an idea, but execution is a whole other matter. Okay, so she's drawn how this half of the board and how the river is going to go on it. Now, this intersection, we're going to use acetone to make that water so this won't be as deep as the other water effect but on this end here we're actually going to cut off and chamfer it using the acetone so i'm just going to start off take your straight razor put your blade out lock it be really careful working with sharp things people i don't want to have people cutting off fingers All right, so we've got this end of the board, got this end of the board kind of roughly knocked out. And then now we're going to take some acetone and a brush. Okay, so we have our pure acetone and a junky brush and paint towards your edges and into the middle of your river. this side. All right, crafters. Now on. what you do, you're going to take your other piece of foam, match it up, cut your carve out of it, and then do the same to the other side of the bank. And you've got your two halves of your board. The next step, at this point, you're going to flip it over. You're going to take your wire brush and you are going to scrape the underside of the foam so that when you glue it into your form, the glue has something to stick to. Do not forget to do this, or it's not gonna stay in, and the first time you flip it over, it's gonna pop out. We got our board. All right, we're gonna take a small break while we get the other side set up, and then we'll come back to you as soon as we've got the both sets. Um, completed and in the box ready for their first layer of prime before we start really having some fun. All right crafters we are back and as you can see here we finished with the basics of the board using a lot not a little of artistic expression with the, the way that we did the second side of our river. As you can see you will see that sometimes if when you use the acetone sometimes there will be bubbling and so you'll see that uh, Big D has actually gone through and pulled some of it out. This right here is what happens if you use too much acetone. No. Not necessarily a bad thing, unless you have something that's like acid sensitive underneath and you're SOL and I don't recommend it. So, that being said, I'll so, turn this over. So what we did was we took the wire brush, we got both the bottom of them. We're now going to bring the board up and we are going to give the bottom of the board a thick coat of tacky glue and we're going to put these down and let them dry. When we come back these will be in place nice and dry and we're going to start building up some of the landform here and some of the landform through here. 
Okay, crafters. So we've got a couple hours and let our glue dry. It's not completely dry yet. Tacky glue takes forever to dry, but that's okay. It's dry enough for us to take off our weights and to start working on some of our raised areas. Now, as the Lady Dragon pointed out, we want to have some different heights and different terrain types around here. So what we've done is we've cut a couple pieces of foam just kind of randomly that we're going to stick in corners and in the middle areas. And it's very simple. You just take a corner like this, we've cut it, and we've sanded it so it's nice and smooth after chamfering it. Roughed up the bottom. Now we're just going to take some hot glue, run a bead all the way around. And put a glob in the middle as well. Pick a corner and put it in place. Now we've got a couple of the pieces we've done this with. So again, trying to add some variety to your war game. You want to make sure you take these pieces and not do what I just did. Now, because we know that piece isn't going to go anywhere, what we're going to do to make sure that it gets nicely stuck in place, we're going to take a toothpick, dip it in PVA, and then just drive it right through the middle as far down as it'll go. And then when it gets to the bottom, we're just going to let it dry and then we'll just snap it off. And this is just a nice anchor for a couple of the pieces. Now we're going to put a couple more in. I'm going to have the Lady Drake actually pick a couple more pieces and make this hill up here a little better. So we'll be back. All right, crafters, so here we are. Our glues are basically dried. We've got hot glue where we've used it to fill some gaps and connect some pieces and really kind of tie the whole board together one solid piece. So now the last thing we're gonna do is we've already done some sanding, we've done some shaping, but now we're gonna use some lightweight vinyl spackle. And we're just gonna get your hands wet and just grab a bit of this premix spackle and you're just going to use this to smooth out your edges and kind of put a protective coat on things just to kind of tie the whole thing together. Go ahead and don't worry about getting your hands messy about it and just use it to tie everything together and as it dries you can wet your hand again and just kind of smooth it further but we just want to make it so these hills have a nice, simple rise to them. We want to make this all nicely smooth together. So don't worry about it. This stuff is nice and safe. It should dry pretty quickly. It's really good for filling gaps. And this is the lightweight vinyl stuff, so it won't crack, it won't separate, and it'll put a gentle texture on a lot of your stuff. This will make it great for painting. This will give it a protective coating. So just go on in and give everything that has rough edges and sharp edges where you want it smooth, just go ahead and rub this stuff down. We're gonna come back one last time after I get this all put in place and let you see it once it's dry. And here we are, crafters, after an overnight drying. Our plaster or uh, spackle is now nice and hard. We've got a slight texture to it. 
and we're gonna put a coat of black Mod Podge on this thing all right crafters here we go nice board all done ready for detailing construction is complete this thick coat of Mod Podge got to dry for about two hours and then she and I are gonna start right cracking away on this thing as a small note uh, to put in there, do make sure that when you put your Mod Podge on that you seal everything because any time that you're going to put anything in, any of the ridges, you don't really want it to seep through If you because this will allow you to actually use spray paint on the board without compromising the pink foam that's underneath. As long as you remember to use that spray paint from at least 18 inches away, you want it, the acetone in the accelerant to evaporate before the paint strikes the foam. This also will help for, in our case, because we've got the rivers and the channels for our resin that we're going to put in for the water effects to keep it from spreading out in ways that we really didn't want it to. So thanks again for being with us crafters. Remember, the easiest way to epic your board is to make it yourself. Game on. <laughs> See you all next week. <laughs>